Now I knew delivery of iron from Mizuno was always an exciting day and I've got to say what I've seen so far, the Mizuno 923s, well they make no exception. There are in fact five new models in the 223s, three of which I have in my mitts and two are not released until February of 2023. Right, so like I said, five models being released, but the uh, Tor and the Forge models, well, they're not going to hit the stores until February. So we're going to take a closer look at those nearer the time. But as you can see from the visuals, they look pretty special. But we're going to have a look at today at the hugely popular hot metal lineup. And I say hugely popular because I know it's a big seller for Mizuno. You out there give plenty of positive feedback surrounding these clubs. But I've got one major issue that gets me totally confused in what's been added to this new hot metal lineup. Right, so before I tell you why I'm so confused by these three new models, let's take a look at them. Not three new models, one new model has been added to the lineup. But basically you've got the 923 hot metal, you've got the 923 hot metal pro, and then you've got the 923 hot metal HL, which is high launch. Now, before we go any further, visually, I think we'll all agree, yet again, Mizuno have produced a real good, strong lineup of irons. That there can be no argument with. I think we can all agree on how good they look, but the difference is what separates the three different models. Well, first of all, the main difference is being the size and bulk of the clubs. It's really quite simple and as straightforward as that. The Hot Metal Pro being the smaller, more compact profile, then it's into the uh, Hot Metal, and then you've got the bigger, bulkier mass of the Hot Metal HL. And that's where it starts to get a little bit confusing. Now, before I get on to tell you exactly why I'm so confused by exactly what's gone on with these 923s, I'm gonna first of all talk about what I think of them in general in terms of performance. They play exceptionally well, but they play exceptionally well just like the previous iteration in terms of the 921s. I'm not seeing any huge significant differences in terms of performance wise. The sound and feel for me, these are not nothing feels like a Mizuno. Certainly not, I haven't got the Tour, I haven't got the Forge model, but in the hot metal has always been an issue for me in that they're slightly louder, there's a more clickier sound. And to me, it goes very much away from what I expect from Mizuno. So this type of iron is a little confusing in that respect alone is that it goes against the grain. But in terms of overall performance, I can't criticize either of them. But the big difference is the way in which each of these are lofted, and that is completely against what we're expecting. That really doesn't fire out any better than that. That is bullet straight and position A. And just sat short of the bunker for those of you who are interested and i've even got to look down that is the hot metal four iron and i say i've got to look down because i did say that the size and profile in these clubs differs but not hugely in all honesty when these clubs are laid down together i'm really struggling to differentiate the difference between each of them so even though i said the profile was smaller and more compact in the mizuno pro which it is it then gets larger into the hl there's not a significant difference and there's not a real noticeable one so even that alone, I sort of struggle as to why there's three versions of this. You've then got, probably notable when you sit them all together, more offset into the HL than you have got in the Hot Metal Pro. So I understand that logic as well. But this main difference and where the confusion lies sits in at where these are all lofted. Right, next thing I'm gonna ask is that you get involved in this video and uh, you're gonna see three clubs in front of you now and they're at the address position, so top line effectively. And what I want you to do is pause the video and tell me down in the comment section below which is which. So don't forget, smallest profile is the Hot Metal Pro. Next up in size is the Hot Metal and then the bigger profile is that Hot Metal HL. Now for me, I can tell the difference if I'm honest with you. I've looked at them for quite some time and I can sort of study them and work out which is which, but it's not that vast. Next thing we're going to do, there's seven irons you've been looking at. I'm going to swap into four and five iron, exactly the same three models, exactly the same quiz. Can you get them all right? The reason I'm asking this question is simple because we've got effectively three irons that at address look very, very similar. You've then got a question why the three models exist. Turn the clubs over and we're going to do a very, very similar thing. You can see a significant difference in terms of the profile from below. You'll notice the width of sole is significantly different in that Hot Metal Pro to what it is to the HL. 
They do a really clever job though, Mizuno, of making it appear visually slimmer in your bag by that switch up from satin into high shiny chrome. And I think that's a good job of making what is a bulky iron look that little bit slimmer. It's a trick on the eyes that they play. So you can tell from underneath, but from a dress, I think it's a tough one to tell. And already I'm questioning why do three models exist and that's what we're about to look into. Right, little par three, 145, maybe a little bit longer than that to the back pin, but I'm gonna to go to play the Hot Metal Pro. And the reason I'm going to the Hot Metal Pro is that I think, well, with Hot Metal and with Hot Metal HL, they'll be stronger lofted clubs, so they're gonna travel further. The Pro has got to be the weakest lofter, the weakest lofted rather, and therefore should be more traditional and more like this distance we're trying to cover with a seven iron. It's a really nice looking shot, just right a flag. Distance wise, long, and quite a bit too long as well. So I'm slightly confused. That should be the weaker lofted. That should be more traditional in its loft. Surely this is a pro version. 145 carry should have been bang on. About 15 yards too long with that. Right, I'm gonna make a statement that we've possibly heard quite a number of occasions over the last four or five years, and that is that golfers with slower swing speeds are driven towards super game improvement irons with stronger lofts, lower CGs, that can help us launch the ball higher and not lose out in distance. That's a statement that we've heard from lots of manufacturers, justifying why so many irons have become so strong lofted. Is that a statement we can all agree on? I'm gonna use the assistance of my phone to read directly from the information I've been given from Mizuno because to be quite honest with you, I said to Hannah off camera, I'm gonna read it again just to see if I've got this wrong or if I've misinterpreted and perhaps I have. But what I'm about to read here is a complete contradiction of the statement that I've just made. Very much this range from um, Mizuno has been, as they say, engineered for custom fit. They've got 350,000 swings logged and they found out that we deliver the club in a certain manner that suggests that game improvement irons, traditional game improvement irons that is, what we've led to believe is, you know, the right way to go forward in terms of the way the stronger lofted are not working for us. And that 50% of players need assistance with launch. And that is based on an average club head speed of 82 mile an hour. So it certainly sits into the category that I would fall in. So we now need assistance with launch, which means that the stronger lofted irons in the 923 sets are both the Hot Metal Pro and the Hot Metal. They're in fact 28.5 degrees in terms of their strength of left on a seven iron. That's extremely at the strong lofted end. But their HL model is the one that they're now suggesting is that super game improvement market. That's who it's aimed at. And would you believe the loft on that is 31 degrees. So the bigger, bulkier club is now the weaker lofted out of this range and the smaller profile is now the stronger lofted. That's a complete contradiction to everything that we've seen in my eyes over the last few years. And I'm extremely confused as to which way they've gone with this. Right, so the next part of this experiment, and believe me, it all comes clear hopefully very, very soon, is you're gonna see three shots that you see me play. The first one landed there and it was in fact the standard hot metal. Great ball flight, nothing wrong with it. Finish in the middle of the green, take that any day of the week. The next ball you'll see me hit is the Hot Metal Pro. Lower ball flight, maybe not as good as a strike. It landed just in the rough there in front of you. But again, from a distance perspective, nothing to split them whatsoever. And then behind me was the final shot that you see me hit, and that was with the HL. There's a huge difference in terms of ball flight. And let's not forget, we're now talking about two and a half degrees difference in terms of loft this being the weakest at 31 degrees. It's landed, or ended up at least, in exactly the same place with a totally different ball flight. So the question I'm asking myself and why I'm so confused is why is the biggest club with the biggest mass, the closest club that looks like a super game improvement iron, the one iron that we expect to be the strongest lofted, the weakest lofted? And the complete reverse end of that is the Hot Metal Pro that's landed there 
is the strongest lofted and it's the smallest profile, the more compact out the lot. It just all seems a complete reversal of what we're expecting. Irrelevant of my opinion on how good these three clubs perform and how they differentiate between their performance, I am just so confused as to why and how this lineup has been put together. And this really is the issue for me right here is that the club in the 923 range that I would choose personally, well, that'd be the Hot Metal Pro. And that's because I, let, I like the less offset in terms of the three models. I prefer the more compactness of it. And like I said, although there's not a big difference from above, it certainly is noticeably the smaller profile. So I would be choosing this club. But what I don't want is I don't want this small compact head with the strong loft of 20 and a half degrees in my seven iron. I want this to be close to the traditional loft of 31, which is still a long way from a 34 degree traditional lofted seven iron, but that's kind of the area that I'd want it to be in. In fact, I've now got a small compact profile and a strong lofted head. Don't turn too much more, sit. Oh, we're on dry ground, just about. I think I should point out that um, all things said, have they achieved what they set out to do, Mizuno? In other words, is the higher launching model launching the ball higher? And yes, absolutely it does. But then surely it would anyway, if one's lofted at 31 degrees and the other is lofted at 28.5 degrees, surely that's obvious, isn't it? Right, we mustn't forget the whole idea of this video, first of all, is to review the 923 range, or at least that hot metal lineup. And they perform exceptionally well. There is no doubt about that, whichever model you choose, they, they perform good, they feel good, and they look really good as well. You can't argue with any of those points. My only issue would always be, and I'm slightly confused as to every bit of this video, I think, is that the Mizuno Pro lineup the sort of high gloss lineup that they've got in that HMB model and the, the 223s as well, is that for me, visually, they're a better looking group of irons. They also feel better than the hot metal lineup. So it's an extension of a lineup of the five clubs to choose from that almost make the whole thing just a little bit too confusing. But like I said, club performance wise, yes, I would knock them. But I go back to this iron. I have now got the opposite end of the spectrum in hand, and that is the HL model. It is by far the model that I prefer in terms of the ball flight that I've seen both with seven iron and I've been hitting five iron off camera as well. What I don't like so much is just how much mass there is. And uh, for me, like I keep saying, the bit that has got me completely confused. So my final verdict is, well, one of confusion, like I said, and I hope I haven't confused you a lot too much either. Like I said, if you are considering buying a new set of irons, then without doubt, put them on the list. That is a, a no brainer. Honestly, they're a good performing iron. I feel like I've concentrated on one thing and that was the confusion in the way they've been put together. And yes, I have, but it still is gonna baffle me. I just think that we need, I've, I think like I've missed the point somehow. By all means, put me right in the comment section below. I really don't understand why it seems to be a complete change in logic to what's been applied for so long to Super Game Improvement irons. And as I said, for me, the ideal scenario would have been the Hot Metal Pro with 31 degrees worth of loft in the seven iron, and they've got the perfect iron. It's not that. And that's the bit that will always remain, for the time being at least, a uh, complete confusion for me. Right. Get me your comments down below. Tell me where I got this one wrong. Tell me, are the 923s on your list? Are you going to be trying them soon? And uh, like I said, keep an eye out because uh, it seems like it could be a month or two yet, but we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the Tour and the Forge models later on in this year. As ever, thank you for watching and I will see you all soon.